Oscar. Morning. Morning, Morning Oscar. Chair. Morning, Chair. Morning, Chair. It's 10 o'clock. Uh, just want to check. Is it everybody in the meeting? Yes, Chair. We can start our meeting. Everybody's waiting. That's correct. Oh, thanks. <coughs> um, Morning, Mama. Morning, Mama. Chema, how are you feeling, sweetie? I'm getting there, Mama. I'm getting there. Ah, uh, please do. We need you, sweetheart. No, I'm getting there. Thanks for it, for your prayers. Ah, uh, thank you so much. I know. Yes. Difficult. That is yeah. difficult. Yeah, I know. But... Yeah. Soldier on. <laughs> soldier on, soldier. Yes, I will. I will. Thanks, Mama. Thanks. Okay. Um... Honorable members, good morning. Good morning, honorable members. Morning, Chairperson. Morning, Chair. Good morning, Chairperson. Ah, how are you, Honorable Arnold? I'm, I'm very well and good, good. Uh, yeah, we will keep on praying for you, uh, Chairperson. No, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks, yes. thanks. Uh, Oscar, from the department side, uh, are they in the meeting? Yes, Chair. They led by the Deputy Minister. Oh, good morning, DM. Good morning, my Chair. How are you? I'm good, and you, ma'am? We are trying. We are trying. Mom Bibi, I see you are well. Yeah, Mom Bibi is trying. She's trying. Mm. <coughs> oh. Ooh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Good morning, Mom Soju. Hi, Mom Baby, all right? Yeah. We're getting this, and we're soldiering on. Hi, we're soldiering on. <laughs> Good yes. job. Uh, DM, from your side, are you fine? Everybody's in the meeting so that we can start. Uh, I just want to see whether the new DG is here, but I've seen the rest. Mm -hmm. uh, is the DG here? Um, Isham, I can see you are here. Is uh, Miss Chabalala here? Good morning, good morning uh, to all members and uh, DM. Yes, I'm here. Okay, no, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, so, let me Chairperson, your, Chairperson, your, your, oh, your video is upside down. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it Chairperson. fine now? It's still uh, upside down. <laughs> That's yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, it's better. Now. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> mom, my mom, BB and DM, why you didn't uh, help me? <laughs> No, we were <laughs> excited that we were seeing you better. We were... <laughs> <laughs> you just let me know that thank you are upset. Thank you, Dr. Matibe. Dr. Matibe, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me take this opportunity to welcome everybody to our meeting. Uh, this is our second meeting since uh, we, the beginning of the year. Hope everybody. Uh, he's ready, he's energetic, because this year we are going to run. I'm not going to waste any time. I will check from Aska, do we have any apologies from our side? And then from there, I'll go to DM to check whether she got any apology from the department. Aska? Thank you, Chair, uh, from the side of the committee. Chair, can you hear me? Yes. Can, hello, can you hear me? Okay, yes. From the I, side I of the committee, Chair, we have uh, Ms. Mukause. Honorable Mukause is the only apology, man. Okay. Yes. Thank you. From honorable members, do we have any apologies that you want to? <sighs> From, before I go to the uh, GM, from the honorable members, do you have any apologies that you want to uh, put before us? 
Nein. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, DM from your side. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and good morning to honorable members. From our side uh, is a uh, comrade minister. Uh, is not here. She attended to another meeting and also uh, our acting DDG for fisheries will leave earlier, maybe at about half past level for another meeting with the National Treasurer. But there will be someone standing in for him whilst uh, he's not around. Thank you. Otherwise, everyone is here. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, let's start our meeting so that uh, half past 11, when comes half past 11, at least we are about to finish. Uh, today agendas, Aska, give us the today's agenda. Yeah, the agenda today is uh, the only uh, two items. It's the 2019-20 annual report of the department and thereafter the adoption of last week's minutes, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anyone who second, uh, who proposed, the, I mean, who second the apologies and the agenda? I combine them, the apologies and the agenda. Lindwe Pepe proposed the adoption of the apologies and agenda, Chairperson. <coughs> Any second? Huh? I, I, I second, uh, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Now we are going straight to the department. Uh, I'm going to give to you a uh, honorable DM to outline uh, why are you here today and brief us about your department, your uh, can you start you. Thanks, Chair. Um, I'm not going to uh, to waste any time since you indicated that we should be finished by half past eleven. Um, uh, today uh, we we are here for for the briefing as per your request with regard to our annual report and our uh, financial status. Uh, Chair, the um, only thing that I can bring to attention is just to introduce our new DG, Ms. Nomfundo Chabalala. Can I, can I request the person who put the screen just to put it a little bit off so that uh, Ms. Nomfundo can just show her face so that uh, members should see her. Uh, Ms. Chabalala is our new uh, DG and she's a former HOD uh, from Houghton Department of Finance. And wow. uh, we do that with her vast experience in finances and also in governance. We believe that the department will improve its performance uh, in all areas. She's accompanied by all uh, DDGs and acting DDGs and some senior officials like uh, your chief directors and directors. So, Chair, without any waste of time, um, I will then uh, give over to our DG just to, 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 to give us an, an indication on how things stand from our side. And then, uh, then she will decide the question. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, DG. Thank you Bye. very much. Yes, Ms. Chabalala, we are welcome. Our new DG. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, and thank you, uh, DM. Uh, honorable members, we have our presentation ready uh, as requested. And also, the DM has indicated that we have uh, prepared the presentation to brief the select committee. Um, we are going to go through the overall, which uh, uh, we are will be taken through by Mr. Uh, Isham Abeda, and then the various DGs are going to be presenting on their respective areas uh, in terms of our performance. Uh, any other aspects that may require uh, financial, but uh, obviously the committee had not specified. We are also having our CFO to also then uh, respond to those uh, matters. 
through you, Chair, um, can I therefore request uh, that the, um, uh, the acting DG then be the one that takes us through the summary before the uh, DDGs come through? Thanks, thanks, uh, Chair. Thank you very much. We can continue. Good morning, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. Um, it's Ishma Bada. Um, as the DG indicated, I'll be um, taking you through the initial introduction, and then I'll hand over to the respective um, uh, DDGs um, to talk to their specific areas um, of work. Um, next slide. Um, in terms of our presentation, what we're going to be looking at is the performance highlights for that financial year for the department. We're also going to outline what some of the key challenges for the year which impacted on our performance. Then um, we'll also discuss the Auditor General um, audit outcome and, and some of the correction interventions. Um, and then also um, the, the performance report of the department in terms of the um, details. Chair, this is a graphic representation of what we've achieved as a department, you'll note that on target, we had 67% um, of our projects that were on target, 30% um, of them was work in progress, and then 3% um, were off target. Next slide, please. Just in terms of our departmental performance highlights, I'm gonna take them per program. In terms of program two, there were 234 enforcement notices issued um, for compliance with environmental legislation. We also finalized 56 criminal uh, dockets that were handed over to the National Prosecuting Authority. Under our Oceans and Coast program, we implemented the Coastal Water Quality Monitoring Program, um, and it was implemented in 23 priority sites in the four coastal provinces. We also peer reviewed scientific publications, 20 of them, um, including theses and research policy reports that were peer reviewed. Under program four, which is our climate change, air quality and sustainable development, um, there were five adaptation projects or interventions that were implemented through civil society organizations. Um, and this was done through support from the government of Flanders. Um, and then um, four out of four annual prevention plans were processed in line with our regulations. Under our biodiversity and conservation, um, the, in terms of the expansion of the conservation estate, it was expanded by 0.14%. It's now 15.74% of land under con conservation, which is roughly about 19.2 million hectares. And then 6,557,640 hectares of state managed uh, protected areas were assessed with a MET score above 67%. Um, uh, In terms of the, the, the um, UNCCD drought management plan, it was developed as well during that um, year. Um, under the biodiversity entrepreneurs, there were 446 um, entrepreneurs that were trained. Um, under program six, which is our environmental programs, um, we had 73,568 work opportunities. Um, and then um, also um, 53,192 youth benefited from the implementation of the environmental programs. Um, 1,852 um, wildfires were also dealt with under that program. Um, under program seven, which is chemicals and waste, the Mercury Management National Action Plan was finalized and 30 environmental performance assessments were conducted. In terms of our key challenges under air quality management, um, our air quality monitoring stations reporting to SACWIS um, the, the target was missed there because of equipment failures um, as a result of numerous power outages. We also had burglaries and vandalism in some of the stations that also affected the performance of our instruments. Um, under the environmental program, some of, uh, there, there were some extensive delays in terms of project start dates um, because of adjustments that were needed to contracts. So 
we could allow work and payment to proceed and then also to ensure compliance with accounting and financial management and reporting frameworks. Um, the delays impacted on a number of planned outputs in program six. Um, and then also in terms of some of our contractors, we had um, uh, performance issues in relation to poor workmanship by the implementers, which um, resulted in that work having to be corrected. Um, uh, also one of the contract uh, 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 of an implementer um, that was responsible for wetland rehabilitation projects had to be suspended. Um, this particular implementer was under investigation for fraud and corruption by the Nelson Mandela Bay Metro. In terms of the tire processing um, capacity challenges, we had a planned annual output of 50% of waste tires that needed to be recycled. That was roughly 85,000 tons out of the 170,000 tons estimated um, uh, that would arise for the year. This was also missed due to limited processing capacity. Um, we also had an external audit um, and the um, the Auditor General of South Africa um, did an audit uh, particularly on one program, Program 5, which is Biodiversity and Conservation. Um, they identified two material findings on the report in respect of usefulness and reliability. And then also the findings uh, along with our interventions to address the issue and to avoid the repeat of these findings outlined below. The performance indicator was the number of hectares of state managed protected areas um, assessed with a MET score above 67%. The issue identified by the AG was that our performance indicator on the APP was not consistent with the indicator on the strategic plan. Um, so we were measuring a percentage and not a number. So in terms of um, the corrective action there, the inconsistency of the indicator has been corrected in the draft uh, APP, the new one, and also the strategic plan. So now the target reflects both a percentage and an actual number. In terms of the MET assessment report submitted by management authorities, um, they were not signed and also they impacted on the re reliability of the report. Um, what corrective action was taken is that we've developed an online system um, and it's currently under implementation. The MET assessment reports are approved and now submitted online. Um, so the benefits are that the system is designed to ensure there's consistency in reporting um, and also how these reports are approved and um, obviously submitted. Um, we've seen this already. Move on to the next slide. Um, uh, Chair and honorable members, this is just um, to indicate the, the various branches, their um, uh, particular targets. Um, and also um, how many were achieved and how many were not achieved. Um, so in, in terms of that graphic, this just gives us a little more detail um, in terms of, of how many we've achieved and, and not achieved. So basically you'll see the 3% the there is the three targets that were not achieved out of the, the, the 87 targets that were set for the department. Um, and we've achieved 67% that were on target and 30% that, that is still work in progress. Um, thank you, uh, next slide. Um, Chair, at this point, I'm going to ask the um, DVG for Corporate Management uh, Services, Ms. Mapike, um, to take us through um, her presentation. Um, Chair, I just need your guidance. We normally only look at the um, yellow and the green, the work in progress and targets that were not achieved in terms of our submission. Otherwise, if we were to do every single one, um, including the ones where we've achieved or exceeded the target, um, it would take quite some time. So I need your guidance if we have permission to only deal with the yellow and, and, and the, the red. In other words, the work in progress, um, why it's still a work in progress and also the ones where the targets haven't been achieved. Thank you, Chair. Hello. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, DG, uh, DDG. You can continue. 
Um, thank you, Ms. Mapike. Um, if you can take over then, thank you. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, DDG Isham. Uh, good morning, Chair, Honorable Members, Deputy Minister, DG, and colleagues. Uh, I will go with the guidance to focus mainly on the areas where we have not uh, fully met the target. So the first area that I will start with is an area where we're looking at ensuring that there's sound corporate governance in the department. And we had a target around uh, an, an audit opinion. We were, we were achieving, we were aiming to get an unqualified audit opinion, but uh, the progress shows that for the year 1819, we got a qualified audit opinion. This area of work, uh, CFO will talk to in more detail when uh, he does uh, the presentation uh, around financial. So I'm going to move to the next uh, area where we did not meet the target. Next slide, please, slide 11. Okay. Uh, that is in an area where we are looking at sourcing uh, private sector investments, and this is mainly for our transfrontier conservation areas. So in this particular year, we're looking at the areas uh, that uh, we are, are between the South Africa and the Lesotho border. We were able to get proposals for funding for these areas. However, uh, at, by the end of the financial year, the, proposal was, the proposals were still under consideration by the Kingdom of Lesotho, hence the target was not met by the end of the financial year, but we are following up with them to ensure that uh, those are, are then closed. The next area is around uh, the skills in the department or human capacity in the department. And we had a target of 8% vacancy rate for the year in question. Uh, by the end of the financial year, our vacancy rate was at 12.3%. And what we had had is that as we continue to fill our vacancies, uh, we filled them more with internal people. We had more internal people that were competent, which then meant we we're promoting people. And as we promoted people in the, in the post that they were then vacating. Uh, so our correct measure has been to then continue to also then prioritize those vacancies that arose out of us filling the other ones. The other area, uh, next slide, it's around um, employment equity targets. The specific target that we missed is around uh, women in senior management position. At that time, we did not have enough vacancies at senior management level. Uh, which we could fill with uh, women, but there has been a change and I think we are making strides in terms of uh, then improving our performance in filling vacancies with women. The next area is where we embarked on a process uh, of developing an online permitting system, which we worked with uh, in collaboration with CETA. Uh, by the end of that financial year, we were aiming to have three modules of that system having been tested. Uh, and uh, at the end of the year, only two of those modules were done. One module was not uh, completed by that time. I think we had challenges uh, in terms of meeting the specifications by the developer and that then had us going back and, and re-looking and re -looking at that module. We have made progress in terms of a development of that module and the testing there on in, in terms of this year. Next slide, please. The other area of work, slide 13, the, uh, I think the last area of work in program one, which was not met, was in terms of uh, where we're looking at improving sector uh, education. And uh, we have an, indica an indicator around beneficiaries that would uh, benefit uh, from environmental capacity development programs. And specifically, we had a target at around training of trainers by the end of the financial year, we wanted to have uh, concluded the program uh, for that uh, training. And uh, this program we do with our stakeholders and we confirm with our stakeholders at uh, six sector, sector stakeholders. And we had uh, planned to have an engagement on the 27th of March to finalize uh, this program. And that then had to move when there was a lockdown uh, introduced at that time. But we then had the meeting virtually in April. So this target was only met in the new financial year because we had to have a virtual meeting and postpone the meeting that we had planned to have. Uh, that takes us to all the areas uh, that we have not met. So in total, 
This program uh, achieved 11 of the 17, fully achieved 11 of the 17 targets that were set in that financial year. And for six of them, uh, our work was in progress in that we have almost uh, achieved the target and we slightly missed the targets in those. And those are the areas that I spoke to. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. I gave uh, the powers to DM and uh, DG. Um, good morning, Chair. It's Ishama Bada again. Um, I'll deal with my specific program now. Um, Chair, so one of the targets that we haven't achieved, our performance indicator was the percentage of administrative enforcement instructions that were complied with. We have a target of 75% there. Um, in terms of the annual average compliance with enforcement note uh, actions, we, re we achieved a 53% target there. In relation to our pre-compliance notices, um, the, the, um, target, the achievement there was 62%. That means 171 of the 274 uh, notices were responded to. Um, uh, in terms of the final compliance notices, 43% was achieved. Nine of the 21 compliance notices um, were responded to. Um, the plan target is partially achieved. Um, however, Chair, yeah, the performance indicator, um, it, it measures compliance by industry, and it's, it's something that's not necessarily within the control of the department. Um, next slide. Um, in terms of the integrated strategy for the management of rhino populations, um, we had to develop and implement it. Um, in terms of the targets we set there, there was a challenge in terms of the scalable and appropriate remuneration structure that couldn't be finalized. Um, we had a very low response rate from the uh, provinces, um, but we've constituted a task team uh, meeting for the, well, it was going to happen in the, in the first quarter of the 2021 um, uh, financial year to draft the, the final report in relation to the um, remuneration structure for our um, ranges. Thank you. Next slide. In terms of the next um, work, uh, work in progress area, it was to dealing with a number of interventions for streamlining environmental authorizations um, that we needed to develop. We were developing um, generic uh, environmental management programs for the Working for Water, Wetlands and Land Care program. Um, and we experienced challenges there. Um, there was a delay of about three months. The um, contracted service provider um, wasn't delivering as expected. Um, we basically then put them on terms and also renewed the contract for a further four months without financial implications for the work to be improved and finalized. Um, then, in terms of the climate change uh, regulatory framework and tools developed and implemented, the climate change bill went to NEDLAC. Um, the process was slightly delayed there um, uh, as a result of having to address alignment between the carbon tax and the carbon budget. Um, and we're looking at fast tracking the finalization, um, or, or we're looking then at the finalization of the NEDLAC process. This is the overall performance for the branch. We've, um, uh, on target, we are 60%, and our work in progress um, was 40%. We have nothing that was off target. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, uh, Chair. Um, honorable members, uh, Deputy Minister, uh, my name is Ashton Naidu, and I'm uh, standing in for the acting DDG for Oceans and Coasts. And I'll just run through our performance uh, indicators uh, and, um, and measures. So the first uh, in progress is on uh, slide uh, 22. And that was the publication of the data report for the Oceans and Coasts uh, ecosystems. Uh, that report has been uh, finalized and published in the first quarter of this year uh, since, the, since this uh, measurement uh, period. Thank you. Next slide. And then the next uh, of the two in progress was the National Estuarine Management Protocol. Uh, this was approved this year for publishing for comment. Uh, that chief director has currently worked through the many comments it has and is currently preparing to present this to uh, MinMEC and MinTech in this financial year for approval for, for gazetting. Thank you. Next slide. 
Uh, those were the only two uh, targets that were work in progress. There were no targets that were off target for this reporting uh, financial year. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Next, uh, GDG. Good morning, Honourable. Good morning, Honourable Chair, Honourable Members, and Deputy Minister. Uh, my name is Tuli Kumalo. I am the DDG responsible for climate change and air quality management. Um, in this branch, we have one area of non-achievement on slide 27. Um, instead of 110 government-owned air quality monitoring stations reporting to the government information system, we had 76 stations reporting to the, to the system, the SACWIS. The main reason for this, honorable members, is that there were equipment failures uh, as a result of numerous power outages, including load shedding in the stations. We also had burglaries in the reporting year uh, and which affected the performance of most instruments. Uh, so the corrective measure there is that reliable power supply is required at all times in the stations and uh, also just to cap some of the criminal activity that is associated with the burglaries and the stealing of power cables that supply power to the stations. Thank you, Honorable Chair. It's the only area that is working progress in the branch for this reporting year. Thank you. Thank you. Next one. Uh Yes, my name is Shoni Munjedzi, uh, TTG for Biodiversity and Conservation. Uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, uh, uh, Deputy Minister, um, there's this area um, on the hectares of land uh, for indigenous species uh, that needed to be identified and also cultivated. The identification went beyond the target um, in terms of this uh, specific target. Uh, however, the, the cultivation part uh, was below and could not be fully achieved as indicated. Um, so the, the, the processing of the projects themselves from a financial support perspective uh, took longer um, and um, the process um, had to be adjusted uh, in this area, um, but we still continue through the permitting system to support this work and ensure that there's more and more of areas that are supported or more and more of areas that are cultivated to provide indigenous species or through using indigenous species for bioprospecting um, and biotrade purposes. Um, I think that's the, 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 the area. The other areas uh, uh, interface with program one and program two as reported earlier on. Thank you very much. Good morning, Good morning, Honorable Chair, Honorable Member, and Deputy Minister. Um, my name is Nontlan Tlamkise. I hope I'm audible. My name is Nontlan Tlamkise. I'm the DTG responsible for Program 6, which is the environmental programs. Um, as I start um, with the presentation, I'd like to highlight that in a number of instances where we did not achieve our targets, it was mainly due to a change in the contracting system within the department, a system change that um, would have or would assist to the extent to which the department is better able to manage the resources um, entrusted to it. So in this slide, why we did not achieve the target in terms of full-time equivalence, meaning that we were not able to achieve the targeted number of days we would keep um, uh, the participants um, employed. We did exceed the number of work opportunities created. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Nantan, we are on the right, on the right slide. I think the problem from your side is DM. Thank you, DM. So in terms of the accredited number of participants, the number of days are provided for training 
and the, also the number of uh, visitor accommodation uh, provide, uh, constructed, um, as well as the number of wetlands under rehabilitation. It was the same challenge in terms of the change in the conducting system. Next slide, please. The same um, reason applies in terms of the number of hectares under rehabilitation and as well as the number of kilometers of accessible coastline. Um, honorable members, it's the highlight is that it was mainly a change in the contracting system. However, in terms of the number of hectares, of initial hectares of alien plants treated um, over and above um, the, the contracting system, it was also to do with the terms of reference and the con uh, finalization of contracts um, with the service providers. Next slide, please. Um, the, the number of community parks created, we also did not um, achieve the target and we were able to um, achieve um, a construct one community park or refurbish it into a late community in, in Worcester. However, in terms of the area that is red, um, it's the number of, 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 of school um, abolition blocks, a partnership that we had with the Department of Public Education. So we were not able to achieve the target um, mainly due to a change in the number of schools um, allocated to the department for the ablution blocks using an innovative building um, technology material. We are still in engagement with the Department of Basic Education. Next slide, please. The number of buyback centers as well, in terms of instead of the annual target of six, we are not able to um, 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 achieve this target. Although um, at, 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 at some point um, we were working in terms of finalizing the paperwork for the cons for the for the transfer of the constructed uh, buyback centers. Um, so we have prioritized all the outstanding work. I mean, which was prioritized in the 2020 2021 financial year for completion. Um, next slide, please. Overall, the program was not able to achieve all its targets. We only achieved 20% of the allocated targets and 60% mainly true or mainly associated with the change in contracting system and also the 13%, um, which was also um, the one rela related to the partnership with the basic Department of Basic Education. <laughs> One of the um, causes. Good, good morning, honorable chair, honorable members. Thank good you. Good morning, honorable chair, honorable members, honorable DM and colleagues. Uh, I'm Mamukhala Musakene. I'll be taking you through program seven chemicals and waste management. The first area that um, we did not achieve fully on is with regard to the policy instrument and um, that we needed to publish for public comments on the management of plastics and um, we were not able to publish in that year but we subsequently were able to publish on the 7th of august 2020 the reason being that um the uh, plastic bag manufacturers raised concerns with regard to the 100% recycled targets that we were aiming for in the amendment to the regulations for the year 2027. We are currently addressing the problem and uh, we have um, recourse in terms of the exemption should the scarcity of the recycled uh, be an issue in 2027. Next slide. The other area where we had challenges related to the percentage of waste tires that have been processed either through recycling or energy recovery. Uh, the main issue in this area is that we have lost the processing capacity. Uh, this is led by the companies that were in the space. One was closed down uh, because of upgrades and they are currently now attending to their a emission license, so they should be able to resume soon, but for now they are not operating. One also closed down because of um, they were not making uh, profits. Uh, one, we had disputes with regard to the uh, tonnages that they were submitting, 
and the others that were awarded the contract, um, they could not, for now they have not started being operational because they are still sorting out their funding uh, agreements uh, with funders. So that mainly led to the, the, the issues uh, that uh, we couldn't uh, achieve there. In terms of what we are doing currently to address this problem, we are busy um, being assisted by the CSIR developing the entire industry waste management plan that has got a specific emphasis on waste tire processing and that would enable us to improve the processing capacity in the country. The next slide. With regard to the jobs in the waste sector, we fell short in terms of that achievement, mainly because of our program, um, the Recycling Enterprise Support Program. We, we had issues of internal controls that were flagged by um, uh, the, the auditors. So we needed to address those uh, gaps in the internal controls and that meant we, we, we did not have to proceed with some of the supports because of uh, those issues. However, we have since engaged with um, the National Treasury through support from our CFO and we will be addressing the guideline with regard to how we implement that program. Next slide. Uh, this uh, uh, indicator on the enterprises is also linked to the Recycling Enterprise Support Program. So um, we have since addressed the internal controls and uh, the revised guideline will assist us to be able to achieve better in this program. Next slide. Overall, uh, Program 7, Chemicals and Waste Management, we had achieved fully on 50% of the targets and three out of the eight were work in progress and the one that remained a challenge was the one on waste tire processing. Thank you. Thank you. Next, DJ. Um, good morning, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, DM. My name is Sue Middleton. I'm the Acting DDG for Fisheries Management, and I'm going to be taking you through the Fisheries Management Report. Just to bring to the attention of members that uh, during the reporting period, fisheries and forestry were still under the former Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. But because of COVID and delays with the audit, by the time we tabled the annual report, we were with the new Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries and Minister Creasy uh, signed off and tabled the report. And hence the reason why we are reporting uh, as part of uh, DEF today to, to you. In terms of the targets we did not achieve, the the one there in red is the revival of the Aquaculture Development Bill. Um, this was not achieved. The bill was tabled um, in Parliament just before the 2019 uh, general elections, and it was decided to um, hold this bill over to the sixth administration for revival. It is now on the parliamentary program for the coming financial year, and it will be revived um, in 2021-22 uh, um, financial year. The um, next slide, the um, other target that we did not meet was to conduct one new aquaculture research project on the economics of a new candidate species uh, for sea urchins. <laughs> This project was scheduled to take place in the Hamburg Aquaculture Facility in the Eastern Cape, but due to the expansion um, of the facility and delays with supply chain processes, um, the project could not take place. The corrective measures are that the tender processes are currently being rerun and the project will get um, take off in the new financial year. And then the last project, uh, last target where we only partially achieved was the allocation of fishing rights to small scale cooperatives in the Eastern Cape 
KZN and Western Cape, noting that the um, cooperatives in the Northern Cape have already received their rights or had already received their rights. This target was partially achieved because we managed to deliver uh, small scale fishing rights to cooperatives in the Eastern Cape and KZN, but have uh, did not manage to allocate rights in the Western Cape due to contestation of the successful list. Um, the corrective measures are that the uh, minister commissioned an audit into the Western Cape list. We have received legal opinion and we will um, start implementing um, and redoing the, the process in the Western Cape in the coming financial year. So if we skip to slide 49, in terms of the overall achievement, we achieved 73% of our targets with 9% uh, in, uh, in progress and 18% uh, not being achieved. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Next one. Next one. Good morning, uh, Chairperson. Good morning, honorable members. Good morning, DM and colleagues. Uh, my name is Pume Zanodata. I'll be presenting on the forestry management uh, branch uh, achievements. As Sue has indicated at the time, we're still with the previous Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, and our branch was forestry and natural resources management. So we've just extracted only the targets that were specifically on forestry. And we had four of those. Out of the four, only one was not achieved. This target was about um, appointing a transaction advisor and having a, a model where we can be able to bring back the production of the Western Cape plantations uh, for the benefit of the sector in the Western Cape, but also for the country at large. There were a number of challenges that we experienced uh, with the supply chain and management processes um, which then led uh, to the delays in terms of the appointment of the transaction advisor. And at the time when um, the evaluation committee had finalized and selected a, a preferred uh, bidder, the adjudication committee was not able to award uh, the contract and it was the end of the financial year. So what we have done um, to ensure that the work continues uh, in, in relation to, to this, um, the target has been included as part of the forestry master plan, which has now been approved by cabinet. And we are doing that work as part of the action plan within um, that master plan. Next slide, please. So in total, in terms of this uh, branch, we were at 75% in terms of uh, achievement, and then the 25% would be that one target that is uh, off target. Thank you. Thank you. Next one. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to request the CFO Sorry, uh, before DG, uh, there was uh, someone at the back who was talking. Do you want her to say something, sir? Okay. Uh, no, you can. Apologies, Chair. Um, I, I'll, I'll hand over to the DG to continue. Thank you, Chair. Okay. No, thank you very much. DG? Thank you, yeah, thank Chair. You, I think DDG, yes, I think DDG Isham was just highlighting that we have concluded on the performance. Uh, the CFO will take uh, the committee through our financial uh, performance. Um, over to you, CFO. Uh, thank you, uh, DG. Thank you, Chairperson and uh, the members of the committee. And good morning uh, to the GM and the colleagues. Uh, Chairperson, I'll give the uh, summary of the financial performance of the department and also speak uh, uh, to the audit outcomes for the 2019-20 uh, financial year. Next slide. 
The department chairperson, uh, in total, we spend 98.4% of the budget uh, during the year 2019-20, and the APP target was 98%, so we managed to uh, hit that uh, target. The areas, uh, chairperson, that needs to be highlighted from the underspending point of view, it's, uh, there was an underspend in Oceans and Coast, which is our program three, and this related to programs in the oceans economy projects that uh, were not finalized or reached the level of invoicing in that year to be paid for. Uh, in terms of program six, we also had in this program uh, some EPWP projects that uh, we finally could not uh, make payments for because of slow progress, but there were also uh, loans that we could not uh, give through the green fund, uh, which is administered together with the uh, DBSA. And then in program seven, Jefferson, uh, we had underspend relating to the recycling enterprise support program. Uh, the, this matter was reported to earlier on by the branch manager, uh, Ms. Mamakhala. Uh, so those were the uh, major underspending areas uh, in the department for that year. Uh, I have spoken now here, Chepes, and I'm just giving the numbers uh, so that the committee can see the areas of uh, underspend. You can see program three, it was 36 million, program six, 55 million, and program seven, 23 million. In overall, we spent uh, 98.4. Next slide, please. The next slide, Chairperson, is the same results, but we providing those results uh, in terms of the economic classification. Uh, I won't speak to this. Uh, I will move on to the next slide, which will be now the audit outcomes, uh, Chairperson. Uh, on this slide, I uh, would like to provide the committee just with the history of the department in terms of the audit outcomes, just for the last three years. 2017-18, Chairperson, we had an adverse uh, audit finding. In 2019-18, uh, we improved that uh, outcome to a qualified with 11 uh, paragraphs of uh, qualification. In 2019-20, which is the year we are reporting now, we are really disappointed by the results that we could not move to the unqualified, which is the stage that we wanted to get to. But in terms of the program that we had in place, the audit action plan, we managed a chairperson to clear eight uh, paragraphs of qualification and we remained with three uh, out of the 11 from the prior year. Next slide. Uh, here chairperson is just to give a background quickly of uh, what happened in the current financial year. We were meant to submit the financials on the 31st of July. As the department, given the challenges we came across as we were finalizing the financial statements and also implementation of our audit action plan, we requested National Treasury that we submit on the 30th of September. Uh, as much as we had permission for that, but it just remained also as a... a non-compliance matter and uh, we then uh, worked through the period and we submitted on the 30th the audit started and we got our audit report on the 23rd of december 2020. next slide uh, here is to give a background of the audit turnaround strategy quickly we submitted a strategy on the 8th of October, 2019 uh, to the portfolio committee and uh, also to the audit and risk committee on the 4th of November. And on a quarterly basis, we reported to the audit and risk committee on progress made on the implementation of this strategy. Mm -hmm. And the next slide chairperson will then give the improvement areas. Uh, on this slide chair, we had um, a qualification on the movable tangible capital asset, which we managed to resolve other parts of this qualification. 
we remained with a matter around section 42 transfers of completed projects that we were supposed to, we did uh, sub, uh, transfer them to the various uh, municipalities and provincial uh, entities, but then there was non-compliance on the issuing of the section 42 uh, transfers, which is a matter we are finalizing now in this current financial year in terms of the audit plan. We had a, a qualification on overstatement of accruals. This matter has been a resolved the chairperson, so there is no uh, action plan. But on the other hand, we know that uh, having resolved an issue in this year, we need to work on sustainability. Therefore, we still keep watching these areas that we have improved on to make sure that they, they are managed uh, sustainably. We had an a qualification on overstatement of uh, commitments. This matter also has been resolved in this audit uh, outcome, and therefore there is no action plan further on it. Next slide. Uh, goods and services, we also had a qualification uh, in 2018-19. That matter has been resolved uh, as we speak, Chair. And then uh, number five, we also had a qualification on expenditure for capital assets. This was more a classification issue between capital assets and outsource services. The matter has been resolved, Richard. Next slide, please. Uh, another issue, Chairperson, we qualified on prepayments and advances. And this matter, we also been able to resolve with the audit action plan that we put in place. Next slide. And then we had an issue, Chairperson, on irregular expenditure. Uh, this matter hasn't uh, yet been resolved, and we have also put additional measures to deal with this issue in terms of the current uh, audit uh, action plan, uh, Chair. Uh, the issue on fruitless and wasteful uh, expenditure, uh, in particular by implementing uh, agents, we have resolved uh, that matter with that audit. Uh, we definitely need to still watch uh, this area a lot. It's an area of risk uh, in terms of our processes. Next slide. And now, Chairperson, here, this is the 2019-20 audit report qualification methods. We've got the irregular expenditure. It has got two paragraphs. The first paragraph, it is about the figures that we reported in the annual financial statement as much as we have been able to report more of the irregular expenditure. The issues of accuracy were still uh, an issue with the audit. And therefore this matter uh, has to be resolved with the 2021, 2020-21 uh, report. And uh, we've put it in the action plan to be able to finalize it. Uh, the action plan has, uh, we started the, to have our first meeting last week, and uh, we have had another meeting this week, and uh, we're framing up uh, these issues in consultation with the various branches, uh, Chairperson. And then the last paragraph on the irregular expenditure related to some items, in particular issues where procurement under 500,000 uh, where we deal with quotations. There are still some challenges in terms of the implementation of the preference points and the areas of the documentation that is submitted by the service provider still to be dealt with in the current financial year. The last point in terms of the qualification, the next slide, uh, slide number 15, here, Chairperson, it's the matter I referred to uh, previously is the issue relating to the Section 42 uh, transfers. We need to uh, clear this issue by making sure that the documentation of the transfers of all the properties that have been completed, which are just to give examples, we, we build uh, buyback centers, uh, municipalities, landfill sites, and then in other conservation uh, areas we also uh, put up uh, chalets and so on. And these properties, when they are completed, we need to officially, uh, through the Section 42, transfer them to uh, the municipalities and also provincial uh, entities. 
Uh, I think the official transfers have happened in a sense, Chair, but uh, the compliance with Section 42 in terms of PFMA, the documentation that we used uh, needs to be sorted out uh, still. I think this must be the last uh, slide. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson and uh, GM and the members. Uh, this is the outcome of the audit uh, results for the department. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, CFO. Uh, I'm not going to waste time. I'm going to give to members to ask questions. Now, members. Chairperson? Yes, ma'am. Can, can I make a, a, a proposal, please? Can we first concentrate on the financial um, report, uh, the annual report financial statements, before we go to, to, to the performance report? Can we, can we first do the focus on, on the financial uh, report statements that has been, has been done now? and then uh, move to the, the performance report. Okay, uh, any second for this one or opponent? Honorable no, Scott, Chair Pearson. Honor so, sorry, yes, Chair Pearson. Uh, yes, Honorable Bibi. I think since presentations were done, inclusive with the financial statement, mm -hmm. members were just going to ask questions where they feel like. Yes. Yes. Like I'm saying that we mustn't have specific sort of program that we are going to start with. Instead, I know members have got questions, so we just yes. continue with that. Thanks, okay. Chair. Okay. Honorable uh, Fute, can we uh, not sorry. waste time on the issue where are we going to start? Can we go straight to our questions? And yes. If if you have a question on the finance, just go straight to the finance yes. and deal with it. Agreed. Honorable Trude. Um, no, Chairperson, thank you. I just, um, maybe just a question to you to Honorable Lovis Maybe she can just explain why, because I, I, I understand maybe why, but maybe just for clarity why she wants to do it that way um, so that we can, or be on the same page regarding that. That chairperson, that proposal was not seconded. Yeah, we were saying that presentations were done. Yes. So everyone should follow suit according yes. to, to the questions that were done. If she That's has got on financial, she can continue asking the question on financials. Thank you, Chair. And, and I did the ruling that we must continue with the questions and then uh, you will go to the finance, you go to the programs uh, uh, as well as when you ask your questions. Honorable Daphne, can we? I, 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 the proposal I made, I made for the sake of order. If we were in normal circumstances, if we were sitting all together in one room, normally the annual report is being done on the following basis. The department presents, we would have had a big document as the annual report, and the chairperson would have gone through that and say, any questions on page one, any questions on page two, and we will continue and we will work through the report page by page. Now, if you think back, on how, what is the content of the annual report? We first have the the introduction and the and the and the minister and the and the head of departments uh, and the CFO report. Then you get the financial report, and then you get the the report, um, the the uh, performance report, and then you also get a report on the auditor. Now. Whatever your ruling is, is fine, but uh, it's not been presented together. It's been presented as two separate presentations. And the only reason I ask for that is clarity. Mm -hmm. 
not to have it chaotic, but it's fine. Okay, ma'am, uh, Honorable uh, Labuskakne, can we continue with our questions as uh, it was raised by Honorable Bibi that we must ask questions and we go to the finance and we do everything. So, Honorable Matibe, can you help me? I started to, I don't know. Yeah. Honorable Matibe, can you start it to help me on cherry? I feel oh. dizzy. Okay. Uh, so sorry, honourable members. Uh, honourable members, uh, you will remember last time I I had to chair the committee uh, because uh, honourable Mudise was not uh, feeling uh, very well. But it will be important, uh, members, that uh, uh, I don't just chair because she proposed. It must be formalized by the committee that I'm, I'm chairing. Um, we can, uh, Honorable Bibi. Yeah, thanks, Chair. No, I, I propose, Chair, for you to, to chair the meeting since Honorable uh, Debuho is not really well. Thank you. Okay. Th thank you very much. Can we get any second? A second. She has uh, seconded. Do we have any other name, uh, honorable members? Uh, just see, just seek. No other name, Chair. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, honorable uh, uh, Nana. Uh, we will go to questions as uh, proposed. I would uh, request that uh, members, when they ask questions, they refer, if they are referring to a program on biodiversity or on environmental program, they will indicate which program they are asking a question on. Um, can we start with uh, Honorable uh, Bibi and uh, followed by Honorable Lute? followed by Honorable uh, Arnold, followed by Honorable uh, Lauskakni, and uh, followed by Honorable Nana. Uh, Honorable Mudisa, will, and, and lastly, Honorable Nguanyo. Honorable Mudisa, if you feel like you are better, you can then uh, indicate and ask a question. But uh, can we go in that order, starting with Honorable Bibi? Okay, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, greetings to the DM and your team, and also the colleagues. And also thank you for the detailed uh, presentation. Uh, what I liked with it, um, each and every program was accompanied by challenges, which means that you didn't shy away to tell us, to tell the committee, about the challenges that you have in each program. Uh, Chairperson, I've got only three questions here. Uh, the first one uh, will be uh, on fishers, fisheries, yes. Uh, Chairperson, it is uh, encouraging to hear from the department uh, that in 2019 to 2020, uh, financial year, the fishers and cooperatives in KwaZulu Natal have received 15 year fishing rights allocations. Now, my question is Are these fishing rights allocation of 15 years uh, renewable? And if no, why not? And if yes, what will be the criteria to renew them? Uh, my second question will be, uh, your annual report on the year under review reflects that through the National Adaption Fund, uh, the department has supported a number of projects in Wazulu Natal. 
where most of the beneficiaries are women and youth. Um, can we get the specifics uh, in terms of the exact number of projects which were supported in the KZN by the department through the National Adaption Fund? And at which districts the beneficiaries are from in KZN? Chair, the last question will be um, in November 2019, a high level panel uh, of experts uh, was po uh, appointed to review policies, legislation, and practices related to the management, breeding, hunting, trade, and handling of elephants, you name it, lions, leopards, and rhinos. So my question is, has the panel completed its work? And if yes, can, can the committee get this report from the department? Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Plute. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I'm going to ask two questions. The one would be on uh, national waste management and the strategy and the other one will be with uh, regarding the, the, the whole issue of climate change. Uh, so let me start there. Uh, you know, anyone who, 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 who dares to criticize something about the, 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 the Paris Agreement uh, is immediately branded a, um, a denialist. And I, I want to start there to say, uh, I think one thing we should all agree upon is that, you know, to conserve is good. It's good for our future. It's good for our children. So let me start there. But the whole issue of the climate change is, in my mind, there's a lot of uh, uh, issues regarding that, especially because people don't really understand what's going on. They don't understand what uh, our governments are doing. And some are, are even saying, well, this is only virtue signaling. It's actually, actually just a popularity contest. I'm not saying that, but this is what people are saying. It's just... Uh, something everyone signs and then leave it, leave it be. And maybe they, they are right in a certain, to a certain extent. Because let me give you some interesting facts that came out this week. Um, because if we set targets for ourselves, we will be judged by those targets. Just this week, Pulsewaterhouse Coopers um, published a, a report on, on, on climate change and, and and the Paris Agreement and uh, where South Africa is. Now, South Africa remains one of the biggest greenhouse gas emitters in the world. That's with China. Worldwide, uh, carbon intensity has dropped by 2.4%, which is good, but in South Africa, we showed an increase of 1.3%. So together with China, we are the, ranked the worst of the G20 performers. In fact, our carbon emission uh, to GDP is the worst. So we have a certain uh, percentage of carbon emission, but we say, okay, but the, the GDP will grow. Um, we are the worst with that as well. Now we also hear that air quality monitoring stations remain a challenge. The second year we, we heard about this. So we're not even sure whether the, the, um, the information we are getting is, is correct. My problem with, with the climate change and especially the, the, the Paris Agreement is the following. Last year, we sent a delegation, South Africa sent a delegation to, uh, to I think it's called, to uh, the, the fifth um, uh, uh, Paris Agreement. And there, there we were supposed to, with other countries, give our revised national determined commitments. Now, South Africa was not one of the countries who did that. And unfortunately, members in this, in this committee was there as well. My problem is, we have not seen an implementation plan for local government or municipalities in this committee. We are, everyone here is, or each member, honorable member here is supposed to be representing their provinces. And then in the free state, we have Sasselberg, who we all know is a major contributor, but we need to say, 
what what's what's the plan going to be with 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 climate change so my question is when will this committee see that local government plan or plan to implement paris to, uh, the, the paris agreement or will it just be dictated from upwards downwards and say well this is what you need to do so that's the one question when will we see that implementation plan for our provinces second question is on the on the whole issue of the national waste management strategy uh, we see again that's being delayed why is it delayed and when will it be published for um for for south africa to see it thank you uh, thank you very much uh, honorable Plute. Uh, we go to uh, Honorable Arnold. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and uh, greetings uh, to the Deputy Minister and then to the new uh, uh, Director General and then also to all the officials and also the NCOP Select Committee members. Chairperson, um, yes, uh, let me first thank uh, the Department for or the annual report presentation. Um, um, then, Chairperson, the department presented a 67% on target 2019-2020 annual report with a 30% work in progress. As a committee, we are not happy at all with your 67% on target and with a lack of performance. And uh, Chairperson, I, I don't know if the new uh, DG um, as mentioned by the Deputy Minister uh, in terms of uh, that she will improve performance in all areas and we can see now where the lack is in terms of the department's underperformance and not improving in some of the areas of concern. Uh, then Chairperson, in admin, uh, the program one under administration, um, the vacancy rate um, you promoted people to reduce the vacancy rate, but the vacancy rate is still high. And uh, we are not at all happy in terms of the 12.3% vacancy rate. So the, the department needs to, to, to correct this um, vacancy rate. Then, Chairperson, what is also very concerning uh, in program one is the percentage compliance to the employment equity targets in terms of the 50% women representation in SMS. And uh, we are not happy with this underperformance. This is unacceptable. And uh, uh, we need to, 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 to tell the department that this lack of underperformance, especially uh, with the 50% women representation in the department, um, uh, we need to, to correct uh, uh, this and it must be a priority uh, that the filling of those uh, vacancies in SMS uh, with females, uh, female candidates, that that be uh, a, a matter of, of, of priority for the department. Then chairperson program two, uh, in terms of compliance and, and sector monitoring. Um, uh, we note also with concern the increased expenditure uh, in terms of uh, increase in legal costs uh, for cases brought against the department, the purchase of software, and the increased compensation of employee costs. And the department need to expand on the legal actions being brought against the department and what the total cost is and the nature of, of, of those uh, uh, legal um, cases against uh, uh, the department. Then chairperson program five, uh, the number of biodiversity uh, economy initiatives implemented mentioned, uh, the challenges, delays with allocation of funding for planned projects. I did not hear uh, what those challenges were. So if the department can just give us more information in terms of what the, uh, um, the challenges of delays were in terms of those projects um, 
um, uh, on in program five. Then uh, chairperson, uh, program eight, uh, forestry management. Uh, the department lists a target for a recommissioning of Western Cape Forest in par, uh, uh, program eight. Can some clarity be provided regarding this target? Is the plan to start recommission uh, indigenous or exotic plantations? Um, which former plantation areas are being considered? What is the cost benefit analysis for recommissioning? What would the impact be on conservation efforts in areas that will be uh, recommissioned? Uh, then chairperson, uh, program six, uh, uh, the department have mentioned now in terms of the number of schools uh, which toilet blocks were constructed and, and we hear uh, that, what, that was in partnership with the basic education uh, department. But I think we need to get further details on this uh, because there is more um, resources needed, for example, in air quality management and it can surely benefit from those resources and, resources. and it is not clear why the department is engaging in constructing of school infrastructure while there is a need uh, in the department uh, with, with, with some of the programs. Then Chairperson, I think uh, every time when the department comes and this is now again an annual report where we, we are finding out that the internal control systems is identified again by the, uh, the AG um, is not, is not uh, up to standard. Um, so I think we need to, 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 to zoom into uh, the department uh, that didn't implement adequate internal con control systems uh, to identify uh, and uh, because the AG couldn't um, um, identify and recorded all instances of irregular expenditure in both the current and the previous year. So I, I think uh, this is a, a real concern uh, for, for, for us as a, as a committee. Uh, Chairperson, I'll, I'll conclude there, but uh, if there's anything else, uh, then I will come again. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Arnold. Uh, Honorable Lavskatni. Thank you, Chairperson. I've got quite some questions. Um, I'll start with the financial, uh, annual financial statement. And uh, I would like to um, ask on page five, expenditure per economic classification, the variance in the public corporations under transfers and subsidies, uh, public corporations and private enterprises. The variance there was is, is quite big and I want a little bit more of an explanation on that specific one. Then Honorable Arnold asked about the internal control uh, functions. I would like the department, if they cannot give us today, uh, I would like them to uh, give a, a a report or presentation to the committee on how, what is the plan and what are they busy uh, on how to fix the internal control system because it's been highlighted um, in the audit journal's report. And then uh, I would like to know Under the, on page 11, um, audit finding by the AG, uh, goods and services. Uh, it said it, that this issue has been resolved, but I would like the department to enlighten the, the committee on how it was resolved. What was, what, how, did the, how did the department and the AG came to a agreement on what will the department, uh, what will the AG not look at or oversee and what will the department do not to, make sure, uh, to make sure that this will not be a problem in future. As well as I would like to know 
a little bit more information on how the department is going to solve the whole issue on irregular, irregular expenditure. Uh, uh, what, is the, what is the current situation? Because we are now in a report of a year ago. Uh, and um, since then, uh, at that stage, it was not resolved on page 13. I would like to know in the meantime, what has happened in the department and how are they resolving this? Uh, because uh, we are looking at quite substantial amount of monies of two billion rand and million of millions of rands that will most probably, if it's not going to be um, resolved, uh, will, 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 or could, might end in an unqualified uh, or a qualified audit again. And the same thing on, on page 13, uh, 14, uh, it's again the ir irregular expenditure. So I would like the department to enlighten us a little bit about that. Then I'm going to the performance uh, report. Um, on the regular right, uh, regulatory compliance and sector monitoring, uh, we're talking about the strategic objective, improved compliance with environmental legislation. Uh, a lot of the colleagues referred to the court cases and the, 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 the situation that this stage is. We're part of the Paris Agreement. We have a set standard of uh, emissions that we have to try to, to, uh, to reach. But year on year, big companies and big polluters like ESCOM and uh, other industries uh, are asking for permission not to comply to these emissions. Uh, and what is happening, and, and then we have uh, air quality priority areas where in which a lot of industries get the permission not to, not to comply to emissions. And at this stage, there's a lot of money being spent to, on court cases where the department is not the initiator of taking action against these polluter, these companies, but NGOs and the private, uh, mainly NGOs, are taking these um, industries to court and the Department of Environmental Affairs is, uh, is part of that because we, they are the custodians of this legislation and has to look at that. So the question is, the department was really give us some insight and we've discussed it before in this committee, but really come up with, with what is in the end the plan, when are these companies going to be enforced either to change their systems and or a, a comply Otherwise, uh, the Department of Environmental Affairs will stay in court with a lot of money because uh, this is not going to stop. Then, uh, I, linked with that, on the environmental, um, um, uh, I just want to get this. this is, at one stage, uh, there was a... Uh, on the air quality uh, program administration, page 13, they, uh, the department says they conducted four environmental awareness campaigns implemented across four thematic areas. One of them were air quality management, which is wonderful and we agree with it. And eight activities have been conducted. Now, given that air quality is a big issue, because all these companies are not always complying and we have high uh, uh, um, uh, uh, areas of uh, uh, priority areas. I would like to know who was the target for the air quality programs that has been done and where has it been done? Uh, then I want to go to the oceans and coasts program Uh, uh, I would like to know <coughs> sorry 
in terms of the socioeconomic study uh, performed to determine the potential of different sectors of the ocean's economy to contribute to the GDP, the figure cited for the aquaculture seems to be a little bit uh, more and far above anything that has been achieved up till now through this project. And, uh, and the figures for the employment um, and DGP doesn't seem realistic. I want to know uh, what would be the supporting environment uh, legislation what would be needed uh, and will that be need will the private sector be needed to invest uh, and will the aquaculture bill being prioritized to make this possible then uh, I also would like to know that on, on that, on the, sorry, I have various documents here. Um, oh, mm. oh, I'm going to ask it under oceans, but actually it can be under the oceans or the fisheries management doesn't matter. Uh, Somewhere in the document it was re referred to research and introducing sea urchins as, as, as one of the new species. I would like to know what is the stance of the department at this stage um, on other southern, uh, on, on, on endemic uh, species like cobia and yellowtail that has been researched by other he uh, Southern Hemisphere countries like Australia. And in the previous, um, uh, in the previous uh, parliament, this select committee undertook a study on aquaculture and fishing and so to Australia. And a lot of um, research has been done. Uh, a lot of these uh, big databases, a lot of uh, challenges, uh, and risks and that kind of things has been researched and has been uh, has been uh, gave some results. Um, and I would like to know: Is there a willingness from the department uh, or from South Africa uh, to look into culturing endemic species like cobia and yellowtail with the existing um, and cooperation with? other countries that done that, that uh, did the same thing. Then uh, climate change, uh, air quality has been asked, other questions has been asked. I would, I would really like the department, we are now in the annual uh, report, uh, and maybe not as an answer, but chairperson mm -hmm. for the department to take note and for the committee to take note, uh, if the department can, at one or other stage, please uh, inform the committee on the national declared contributions uh, that that South Africa has been done, but also on the implementation plan of that. Because uh, if you read uh, the reports and all those things, there's a lot that's been said in those reports. It's a thick document, uh, but we haven't seen the implementation plan. And I would like uh, the department to present that implementation plan to uh, to the committee. Then uh, uh, the pro on the environmental program, uh, Honorable Arnolds or Twitter ask I don't know ask about uh, the schools. I would I would really like to know why is the Department of Environment involved in this building of school toilets. Uh, why that is actually something that needs to be done by public works and water and sanitation or other departments, uh, seeing that we have a lot of high other priorities. Uh, then on the chemical and waste management, um, uh, I would like to know, uh, th there was a reference 
about the difference on uh, the, the, there's a, that the department wants 100% uh, cap on recycled plastic and that the industry has a different opinion. Uh, can you inform the, 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 uh, the, the committee a little bit more about that? Uh, then the whole tire industry thing uh, that uh, is not working, uh, that is not supply, not uh, uh, could not reach the targets. I would like to know the two companies that has been mentioned there that could not uh, do what they were supposed to do. What were the reasons for that? Can we can the can we um, get the names? And then in general, and the reasons for they not being able to perform, then two general questions. The two departments uh, in this annual report that did not uh, reach uh, their targets more uh, like 60% like or 80% or something like that were the environmental affairs and the Western chemical management. Now, it's also very interesting through written questions that I put to the department throughout the year. Those are the two departments that there were a forensic um, reports. Why are none of the forensic reports that's been done in those two uh, departments or two sec sec programs or whatever, or, or um, uh, not being mentioned in the annual report, uh, or is it because uh, they were implemented outside the scope of this annual report? Uh, I would like the department to give us some more detail. Has these forensic uh, investigations uh, been concluded? Uh, and can they, can the department please report back on the forensic, on the findings of the forensic investigations, uh, specifically on the impact of the reasons why forensic investigation had been done and the functioning of the department, as well as to the fruitless and wasteful um, ex and, 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 uh, uh, expenditures as well as um, the um, irregular, uh, uh, irregular uh, expenditures. Um, I will stop there for now. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Lovskakin. Uh, Honorable Nana. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Chairman, I would want to ask, or oh, the, the first thing I would want to, to, to state up front is that I had failed to, to categorize my, my questions and comments uh, according, to, according to programs. Uh, so some of them will be all over the place and I will plead with the DG to try and identify where it belongs if I fail to place it in a, in a, specific, in a specific program. And I'm sorry for doing this to you, DG. Chairman, okay, no, no, fine, fine. Yeah. The, the first issue is on, is on performance, which I think is, is under admin. Uh, colleagues have spoken about the unacceptable performance that has been achieved by the department, which is just above 60%. And I do know the rest is still work in progress, but remember the other balance, which we're told is still work in progress. Uh, they have less than six weeks to, to the end of the financial year and Will 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 the other remaining balance be be achieved? But my my real question, chair, 
on 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 this one or my real interest is is whether those leaders of programs your ddgs and chief directors under them those who have underperformed will they be getting performance bonuses and the other issue chairman is on is is on on the ocean economy the ddg spoke spoke a bit about uh, ocean economy but you see chair as honorable cluter mentioned in the ncop we represent provinces it's unjustifiable for us to sit in these meetings listen to to these reports and really there is nothing tangible you can take back to mamu bibi is lucky you know kz and yeah there is nothing tangible i can take back to to the rural communities of the transkai and say look you guys that are living along the coastal you know coastal line this is this is what the department is planning to do with with the resource you have you should remember those communities don't have gold mines uh, they they rely on the ocean to live and yet there is really nothing tangible you you can tell them when you when you conduct your your constituents work so i would really want to to check with the ddg uh what what are tangible programs uh that that they have up their sleeves programs that will positively impact on the on the lives of of rural communities as i said i'm from the eastern cape and in this regard i'm talking about uh, rural transkai in particular uh, if chair if chairman you will allow me to to move away a bit from from the actual presentation i know that to do with the annual report and uh, chemical and waste i have two examples in the eastern cape where in in nelson mandela bay some company is polluting the the swarkops river and this company is somewhere in utenic it's a known it's a known thing that this company is polluting the swarkops the swarkops river swarkops river as you know runs into in, in, into the sea and and then and, 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 and i mean this the, i mean this has caused untold hardships particularly for people that live in swarkops uh, but again in in makanda grainstown you you have a constant sewage that runs into Maitiana river stream water stream Maitiana water stream ends up in port alfred and down the stream the people consume consuming this water what is the department doing in in order to enforce in order to to force municipalities to act uh, in preventing pollution of these water streams it's two scenarios chairman the first one it's it's a company that that is polluting the second one it's a municipality that has allowed pollution it's a municipality that's polluting because it hasn't fixed its its sewer lines and they're running straight into 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 the water streams uh us fo mentioned something about the audit turnaround strategy a we've had about this strategy fo for a very long time 
particularly when it comes to SOEs, they will tell you about this strategy. The CEO goes, they bring another turnaround strategy, and you realize that all of these strategies are gathering dust in some in some shelves in in the boardroom. In my little understanding of processes, a a turnaround strategy has got to have key performance indicators. In other words, you, you, you have to have milestones to gauge as to whether your audit turnaround strategy is effective or it's not. Now, I may, I may have missed it from you, uh, and please forgive me. Uh, I didn't hear anything that says since 2019, when we devised the audit turnaround strategy, we are 65%, 25%, or whatever percent confident uh, that we're moving in the right direction because of these various milestones that we have achieved as set out in the, in the, in the, in the strategy. In other words, all what I'm asking for is the success rate of your strategy since 2019 to date. And lastly, Chairman, and I'm sorry for being too long. And, and lastly, Chairman, the CFO made a statement uh, which, which sent some goosebumps to me that there were issues of accuracy with regards to the irregular expenditure. And he left it at that. I really would want to to delve in in in, in more detail. Uh, what does he mean? What does he mean by issues issues of of accuracy? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Nana. Uh, Honourable Ngwenya. Your your mic is still muted. Chair. Oh yeah, we can hear you. Hear me now. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much, uh, Chairperson, and thank you for the presentation from the department. Uh, Chairperson, I'll start with my comment. Uh, having studied the annual report and the presentation of the Department uh, of Environment, Forestry, and Fishery presentation of annual report financial statement for 2019-2020. Uh, Chair, I would like you to make the following comment before asking my question. As a committee, we are concerned that the department has received a qualified audit opinion during the year under the review. We are, however, encouraged by the fact that the material fundings have decreased from the previous year, from seven to three fundings. We hope and we wish that the department will get a clean audit in the current financial year. Last but not least, I want to express my pleasure on the appointment of the new Director General of the Department, Ms. Numfundo Shabalala Tongalgama Vuso Tawasil Chuli, and wish her well in her new role. Questions, Chair. It has been reported that the Department, through working for water program, has managed to donate schools' desk to educational, educational institutions countrywide, which are made from wood sourced by plants. Chair, can we get a provisional breakdown which reflect provisionally and the names of the educational institutions which benefit through this program? I'm, I, I'm asking this question, Chairperson, in the content of 
our constitution mandate which provide that NCOP pre present the provinces to ensure that the provisional interests are taken into, into account by the national department. During the period under the review, we have had the department had an increase in legal cost for, for, for cases brought against it. Can the department unpack more about the nature of such legal cases? What contributes to the annual decline in 2019 in Reno poaching and illegally wildlife trade? Lastly, Chair, as of 31 March 2020, uh, your annual report shows that the department had a total number of 25 SMS ports, which were post, which were vacant. So Chair, why the department did not fill all the vacant posts during the period under review? What were the challenges and can we get a guarantee that the department will fill all the vacancies post by the end of this current financial year? I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Mwenya. Uh, Honorable Mudise has uh, put uh, uh, a question on the platform. Uh, I think DG, you must also look into the question that she has put uh, because of her condition. She might not be uh, in a good position to can interact. Let's uh, just click there on the chat group and just check the question that uh, uh, Honorable Mudisa has posed there. I've got just a few comments before we allow you, uh, Deputy Minister and uh, DG and your team, to make. The, the first one is on the compensation of employees. I, I, I look there, the percentage spent is more than 100%. And uh, there was no explanation of variance uh, there. If we could get... Uh, what were the reasons for that uh, variance and why was it not done during the budget adjustment uh, period? Um, that will suffice. I also checked the issue of uh, prepayments and advances. Uh, can we get an explanation that justify that amount uh, which is there in terms of prepayments and what were they meant for? Uh, DM, you will understand that uh, when we look at prepayments, when you hear a word prepayment, Uh, you are opening space for corrupt elements to get in and uh, then have challenges. What is the problem? 
uh, with that uh, uh, issue and how uh, uh, DG are you attending to 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 that matter um, I'm handing over to you uh, uh, Deputy Minister uh, and your team to respond to uh, issues raised. You will see that uh, because it's an annual report, who is here and then who had questions and then if there are questions that are not uh, note down as we have already said so and then members will then indicate and i would uh, like also to agree with yourself uh, chair with regard to the comments that you you made uh, in your in, in, in just before you hand over to myself with regard to irregular expenditure and, and, and issues of uh, prepayments and all those. I need also to indicate that myself and the minister last week uh, with the senior managers, we had a meeting with the office of the auditor general so that we should understand and get more clarity with regard to some of the questions that we have raised of which indeed we, we did get clarities on. And also I'm happy to indicate that our CFO is working very close uh, with uh, the Office of the Auditor General, and of which I think our new uh, DG will also then uh, be part of that team so that we can better the situation uh, in the current uh, financial year. Uh, uh, CFO, can I give over to yourself so that you uh, respond to all those questions that has been asked by members that has to do uh, with your area of responsibility? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Uh, Chairperson, I would uh, deal with the questions as the Deputy Minister requested me to uh, from the members. I think the, the one issue really which is very big out of uh, the, the report is the issue on irregular expenditure. And I would like to uh, provide the members with the response that say the manner in which we're considering irregular expenditure, looking into the issues raised by the AG, but also from a, a, a performance point of view as a department administratively. The issues that we found ourselves uh, lacking in terms of the regular expenditure is that the majority of our irregular expenditure was uh, caused by the functionality criteria that the department set, and it affected uh, almost more than 20 tenders that uh, we, 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 we put out in 2018-19, and, uh, and also the period before. The main finding of the Auditor General was that our functionality criteria was not objective. Therefore, it means that the decisions we made and we the, the tenders we awarded, the manner in which we evaluated them uh, was not objective. And uh, therefore, one uh, resolution from the audit uh, strategy and the audit action plan we put in place is that uh, with effect from April 2020, uh, we had changed the evaluation criteria and made sure that it is objective and transparent. That then means that uh, the action plan that we put in place was indeed uh, uh, one that will enable us to prevent uh, that occurrence of the irregular expenditure stemming from 
the functionality criteria, which really accounts for more than, uh, I would say at this point in time, 90%, if not 95% of our irregular expenditure. So we, we, we have changed uh, the, the functionality criteria. We have further chairperson since April last year changed our process flow to ensure that the process flow enables the administration of the process such that we ensure at every step uh, that we, we deal with issues of compliance and uh, we can be proactive in dealing with them rather than only finding issues after. So the process flow has been updated and we are implementing a new process flow. Uh, certainly issues of training are still very critical to make sure that we carry everyone else in the organization to understand the new way of doing things. Uh, supply chain processes, chairperson are transversal. They involve supply chain practitioners, but they also involve project managers, uh, uh, people from risk management and legal. Uh, it's, a, it's a broad uh, a function that we do in that area, which is good from a governance point of view that it is not only dominated by people in SEM, but it has got various other people. The challenge is that you need to train everyone else to make sure that they understand the process, but that is what we need to do. We've got new forms that we have put in place, uh, Chairperson, in terms of the submissions for the various bid committees. And those forms are meant to ensure that at every step, we are able to look at issues of compliance and make sure that wherever they are applicable, we cannot say that uh, we were not aware of this process or that process. They are all put on a form and in every procurement, because every project will be different, then those that are not applicable, we must apply our minds to them and say it's not applicable. And when it is applicable, if we are not going through a step, we need to justify why, and we must give reasons. So those forms are meant to ensure that we comply with the process or the prescripts of SCM. We have Chairperson uh, appointed a permanent uh, BAC, which then enables us, we, we used to have a BAC that would be different from one time to the other, uh, which really, uh, uh, did not enable us to deal with issues of um, uh, compliance from a consistency point of view. And I think with a permanent BAC, you've got the same team members dealing with uh, various issues, and then we are able to uh, enforce compliance, which is the same uh, throughout. And uh, all of these processes have been put in place in the previous year. The permanent BAC was appointed in August. Therefore, there would still be some issues before we got to August that uh, there might be things that might not necessarily have been uh, on, dealt with on a consistent basis, but uh, the new process will be able. It will have a, a period within which, as you put it in and you implement it, it will be able to weed out issues of non-compliance and at a point we should be able to come out of the uh, uh, valley where we were sitting in terms of these issues that have been raised. Um, we have also the other issue, uh, Chairperson, we are appointing, uh, we have appointed a new chief director and uh, that enables us to be able also to bring in uh, new, new eyes into our processes and in particular, one of the issues raised by the AG, which the chairperson has raised, it's about issues dealing with the identification of irregular expenditure. Uh, this issue, it's uh, for me, uh, has got various issues. Uh, we've got pieces of legislation on which there are some uh, doubts about whether uh, certain documents that are submitted by the service providers should be acceptable as uh, copies or originals and so on. And uh, we have instructed the SCM practitioners to get clarity from DTI in particular around the triple B certificate, which has been an issue uh, in situations of our procurement below 500, just to clarify the position uh, around certain prescripts relating to that. Some of these issues we identify whenever there are doubts about certain uh, applications, to check with National Treasury to make sure that uh, our treatment of these rules are the same. 
and they are confirmed by those who issued them rather than uh, applying our own interpretations on certain uh, of these uh, prescripts. So when it comes to the issues of accuracy, this accuracy issue, Chairperson, uh, relates to the amounts that have been reported as uh, uh, irregular. So when a contract is uh, found to be irregular, on an annual basis, we are required to report only the payments that have been made on those contracts as uh, irregular in that year. Um, now, what has happened in our case, there were reports uh, provided to the SCM colleagues. I think on the other hand, uh, what I have seen to be an issue through the review processes is that uh, the understanding of the financial report by those sitting in SCM who were meant to uh, report on these matters has been uh, found wanting. And therefore I need to be able then to combine the teams in finance and SCM just to make sure that uh, these reports are read uh, accurately and correctly by those who are reporting, which I found to be an issue uh, through our reporting processes that there has been a lot of uncertainty in that space. And it came out in the annual, uh, in the audit report uh, finally. We, in terms of the action, audit action plan that we've got in place uh, currently, Chairperson, both teams will be put together, not the one just supplying the information without a proper explanations to the other. And then we'll also strengthen our review process more uh, in ensuring that whatever has been done is checked appropriately and adequately in time. Uh, the other issues that really plucked our uh, processes were the reviewing process within the time that we had with COVID and staff not all being in the office at this. I would like to take the appropriate responsibility for ensuring that these numbers are correct. It does not matter the environment under which one is working. Uh, plans have to be made and implemented accordingly to ensure this accuracy of these numbers. That is in as far as uh, irregular uh, expenditure is uh, concerned, uh, Chairperson. The other issue that has been raised, uh, which uh, trying to look at the transfers, the variation under transfers of 65.667 million, uh, I have looked at my records quickly whilst planning for this, but I think uh, Chairperson, I would want to provide this uh, report in writing because my number says I just do the calculations on what I've got. Uh, there is an amount of 17, which I need details from the office about, but uh, uh, the transfers where we underspend relates to the REST program and the Green Fund, and there would be other one or two programs, but we will send that uh, the detail in writing for the question that was asked by Honorable Labskahne on, on that matter. Um, the other issue raised by Honorable Labskahne on the finances related to goods and services and the finding by the AG uh, and the In this case, a uh, chairperson is that uh, we have our EPWP program uh, implemented through implementing entities or so stroke agents. Uh, these implementing entities, when we make payments to them, we classify those payments under outsourced services. And on receipt of the documents that prove expenditure in the various areas, namely, management fees, inventory, training and development, then we have to reclassify that expenditure into these various areas. And the problem was that uh, in 2019, 20, we did not have adequate uh, supporting documents from our implementing entities to support the adjustments we made under goods and services, in particular, the item outsource services and the audit was not happy in being able to express um, a, an opinion that these numbers were correct. So the expenditure was there, but its classification into management fees, inventory and training 
was uh, doubtful. And uh, last year, uh, Chairperson, we have been able to send accountants out to these implementing entities. Uh, we made sure that uh, where there were findings around uh, any classification problem that we correct those. And that is why that item was not uh, 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 reported on by the AG because we, we, we were proactive in dealing with it. And wherever anything came up, we corrected those. Uh, these are the areas uh, that are still uh, matters of uh, risk to us. And that is why I was saying, whilst it has been resolved, but we still need to keep our eyes on it for a sustainable uh, resolution of this matter, because we still have a, a dependency on uh, the implementing entities or agents to get this information from them. We have also resolved to move away from this model uh, because it lends us as a department to be dependent on outside organizations for the information that belongs to us. And therefore that approach of making prepayments to the implementing entities, we are moving out of it uh, in the implementation of our EPWP. We will now be order based and uh, it is a transition, transition at this point. Some of the contracts have already been converted to being on order based uh, rather than the previous uh, way of transfers that we were using. So this would be able to enable us. CFO, we, we are losing you at some stage, we can't hear. Oh, sorry, are Chair. Yes. I, am I back now, Chairperson? Yeah, back. Okay, Chairperson, I was reporting that uh, the previous model that we utilize in the implementation of the EPWP programs, where, which uh, made us to depend uh, a lot on the implementing entities, we are moving away from that method. So we will be using an order-based system in procuring service. That we are supposed to give to the uh, auditors for audit purposes. So currently we 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 having a a, a blended uh, math uh, approach in a sense. So some of it it's order based. Some would still be on the old, and uh, we'll still employ accountants to go out and get this information for us for reporting purposes. Um, I have uh, responded to the issues raised by uh, Honorable um, Nana. I think I'm now forgetting maybe the surnames. Uh, my apologies, Chairperson, if I've just written the names as you were uh, pronouncing them earlier on. Uh, the one issue around the turnaround strategy, uh, definitely the turnaround strategy, we've got an action plan which gives us the milestones. What do we have to achieve? And uh, I think Chairperson, said maybe in my report, uh, yes, uh, I did not put it very clear around what were the achievements and so on. The strategy that we put in place together with the action plan enabled us to be able to reduce the uh, 11 qualification paragraphs to three. It was basically uh, coming from, this, from the strategy and uh, I must say that our plan was to remove all of those. So we really missed it by three of the points, which is really disappointing. We're not proud of that. 100% uh, would have been a better performance uh, from us. Uh, we're still committed to clear the remaining three uh, items uh, from the audit report. Uh, I think, uh, DM, I would say, um, I have dealt with all the issues, in particular, the uh, the only issue for us is this issue of irregular expenditure. It, it, it's really a big thing for us that we need to keep our eyes open on it. And the new processes we've put in place, I'm convinced that uh, will be able to take us out of uh, this issue. Thank you very much, uh, Chair and Deputy Minister. Chairperson? Chair? Yes. Uh, CFO um, has tried to respond to all the questions. Members will indicate, as we have said, if there are questions that uh, he did not respond to. 
And then I would like uh, then uh, Dr. Kumalo to, to, to respond on issues that has to do with her area, that is climate change and air quality. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, thank you, Deputy Minister. Um, the first question on my side was in relation to the Paris Agreement um, and the fact that we, our greenhouse gas emissions seem to have increased. Uh, in this regard, uh, honorable members, we have the peak plateau decline, which is the graph that we are, we are working with, the targets that are set nationally, and we are well within the, target, the targets. Um, the other issue around whether the air quality monitoring station's information is, is correct, I can confirm, uh, Deputy Minister, that it is correct. Uh, we do not present the air quality information in the state of air if there are discrepancies or if it does not meet the minimum data requirements. We have a standard. We only represent the information if it meets at least 75% of the reporting year. Uh, on the matter of the NDC submission, there's the deadline for submission, uh, honorable members, is before the COP. So at the moment, we were uh, busy still updating the NDC, and we are now at the point where we are going to take it to cabinet and have public consultation. And then we will uh, submit when that process is completed to the UNFCCC. Uh, with regard to the adaptation strategy and the work that we are doing with the uh, uh, provinces, I can uh, confirm at, at DM that all the nine provinces we have supported and they have developed their climate change response plans as well as the 44 district municipalities. Uh, we've also capacitated them to mainstream the climate change into their uh, interdependent development plans. Um, I think the minister we can supply these uh, provincial plans uh, to the committee if uh, um, we, it is required, but I can confirm to the committee that we do not have a top-down approach on this because for us to create a resilient society, we need to ensure that we work with our colleagues in the provinces and the, and the municipality. Um, perhaps, uh, Deputy Minister, I can just talk a little bit, uh, uh, not necessarily on the awareness programs for equality, but the, the question also linked this to industrial pollution, just to say that we have legislation for industrial pollution and there is uh, enforcement of activities uh, where industries are not in compliance with their atmospheric emission licenses and uh, Isham's branch always provides those uh, reports on compliance activities that have been done in, in, at any given point in time. Uh, uh, I, can, I can leave it there. Uh, I have covered all my, my questions. Thank you, TM. Chairperson? DM, uh, it's your time. You can yeah, call the person following and until you hand over back to me. Oh, thank you very much, Chair. Thanks, uh, thanks yeah. a lot. Uh, DDG um, Bimpo, with regard to the issue that was raised sharply in your area, of, uh, the rate of vacancies. Okay, thank, thank you, Deputy Minister. I think there were two issues. There was an issue around uh, the vacancies and what we are doing to manage those. Uh, DM, if we link that uh, question to the question that was asked also on compensation uh, budgets, which indicated that even in the year in question, we were already getting to an, a level of over expenditure on compensation budget. What we have done in this year is we are looking at the realigned structure so that when we look at a priority post to be filled, we are looking at those that are currently uh, funded. Uh, so I wanted to give assurance uh, to the portfolio to the select committee that we are looking at the vacancy rate. We have looked at prioritizing and ensuring that we fill all vacancies which are funded in the department. And I'm hopeful that by the end of this financial year, when we give that presentation, we will then show that improvement and show that we have met our target in terms of filling uh, the vacancies. So we note the concerns, uh, the deputy minister, and we are addressing the concerns that are raised. The other area, I think uh, Dr. Kumalo uh, responded to the issue around um, basically the industrial pollution, but specifically on the question of what were the eight activities that were conducted in terms of air quality management. Uh, firstly, in terms of the targeted uh, audience for that, 
these uh, programs are normally targeted at ordinary community members. We, we do them at uh, community halls, but in some instances, we work with uh, students uh, or, or learners. And for learners mainly, it's around getting feedback uh, in terms of their understanding of air quality matters specifically, that was what we we're looking at, and their experiences on air quality issues. So the eight uh, activities that we were talking to was the awareness program that we did in Kimberley, uh, and the other one was uh, in Northwest, that we, two in Northwest, uh, two in, in Northern Cape, two in Northwest, uh, and uh, the other one also Freedom Park in Northwest, and we also were looking at production of air quality advertorials uh, in the Sowetan and the Star as part of our public education and awareness program. So that, that's the, those are the responses, Deputy Minister. Thank you very much, uh, DDG. Uh, Mamukhala, DDG, that's DDG thank responsible for chemical waste. Thank you, DM. Uh, the first question raised by Honorable Clute with regard to when would the National Waste Management Strategy be published for, for South Africa? Um, last year, 2020, in September, uh, the cabinet approved the National Waste Management Strategy 2020. It is currently available on um, the departmental website, but we will also share the, the direct link uh, for honorable members just to get it directly. And then two, the question raised by honorable Labus Gachne with regard to the companies, waste tire companies, um, and linked to the underperformance with regard to processing uh, the, the names of those companies. Um, the first one, uh, Heaven Renewable, which is based in Gauteng, uh, it is undergoing upgrading. It's a pyrolysis plant, so they are currently not working because they are uh, upgrading and also addressing their uh, emission licenses as part of the upgrade. Two, uh, the company name is Enviro Protec, um, that uh, has not continued with processing because of profitability issues. Uh, the company was not profitable. They are also based in Gauteng. Um, the third company is uh, Tree Dent Fuels. Uh, uh, it, it did not proceed with processing because of the dispute with regard to uh, the waste tire uh, monitoring tonnages. Then the third question was raised by Honorable Nana in terms of the waste water um, uh, from municipalities that are polluting the rivers. And then two, with regard to um, the industry in Newton Hague. On this one, uh, Honorable Members, the department works with the Department of Water Affairs because uh, in terms of um, the, the mandate, uh, the, the Water Affairs is mandated to protect uh, the water resources and also uh, uh, control any pollution. So both municipalities and industries that might have uh, wastewater that is being discharged they, they will get their licenses from Water Affairs as well. And Water Affairs will also enforce compliance with municipalities. Thank you, GM. Chairperson, as I have indicated that if there are questions with regard to the line function of each manager, uh, if there are questions that has not been responded to, at the end, um, I, I will ask the chair just to, to highlight that or to indicate to us about that. Uh, uh, DDG Fisheries. Thank you, DM, honorable members. Uh, there were four questions directed towards fisheries. Uh, the first one was from honorable Bebe uh, regarding um, fishing rights allocations and are they renewable? Just to explain that um, the allocation of fishing rights, both to commercial and to the small scale sector is managed in terms of section 18 of our Marine Living Resources Act. And the maximum 
amount of time that rights can be allocated for is 15 years. Thereafter, the rights revert back to the state for reallocation. Um, so the fishing rights are not property rights. Uh, they revert back for, for reallocation and um, members of the public are free to reapply. Then uh, the second, um, there were two questions from Honorable Labuskachny. Uh, the first one was on the aquaculture bill. Um, as indicated in the report, the um, aquaculture development bill was referred to the sixth administration, so the current administration for uh, revival. It is on the fishery branches APP for the 21-22 uh, financial year uh, to take it through the parliamentary process. It is on the parliamentary and cabinet schedule uh, for the next financial year. And we're hoping it will um, come to you as well for endorsement and support. Uh, the second part of Honorable uh, Labuskachny's question was around the culturing um, of aquaculture species. Uh, just to indicate that at the moment uh, in South Africa, the species that are being cultivated both by the private sector and by ourselves um, at a research level are grunter, yellowtail, cob, scallops and sea urchins. Uh, all of these species are being cultivated in our Sea Point Aquarium with the um, intention that at some point we will be generating sufficient spat to make the, uh, it available to the private sector for, for farming, for culture, culturing. And the Honorable Labuskakni, there are currently two um, yellowtail and cob farms in the Eastern Cape, in the East London and Hamburg area. Then in terms of Honorable Nana um, uh, and he, his concern about rural Transkei, just to indicate that um, fishing rights were allocated to 71 cooperatives in the Eastern Cape. Um, in the PE um, Humewood, uh, Humansdorp area, but with the majority of these cooperatives actually um, being along the wild coast. Um, and they, those rights were allocated in December um, of 2019, uh, sorry, uh, 2019, yes. And our function now is to provide ongoing development support to the um, cooperatives but they are fishing and they do have fishing, 15 year fishing rights. And then uh, lastly, there was a, the second question from Honorable Modise in the chat regards um, big dams. Um, and the question is why are we focusing only on coastal provinces? What about inland? Um, to, in terms of a response, Honorable Medice, um, historically the fisheries branch's focus was on marine and hence the name of our act is the Marine Living Resources Act. Uh, but we have subsequently um, taken over the mandate for inland freshwater fishing. And the inland freshwater um, fisheries policy is at an advanced stage. It has been through the Min Tech, Min Mech, and NEDLAC process, and it will now go uh, through the DG cluster. And again, it will come to this committee for um, consultation. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, DDG. Uh, DDG Environmental Programs, Mankize. Thank you, Deputy Minister. In response to the questions uh, by Honorable Nguyen and Honorable Annals, um, we will provide um, the breakdown of schools that have benefited from the uh, value-added industries uh, program. With regard to the question that um, Honorable Labustafni um, raised in terms of why is the department involved in the building of school desks, 
um, this is an area within environmental programs. We have a focus um, that we call value added industries. And within that, the intention is to say that once we've cleared um, the alien uh, plants, the biomass that comes out of that, we must maximize as much as possible uh, value adding and commercial opportunities as a part, as a way of um, advancing um, job creation and enterprise development. So it was in that spirit that we got involved. However, with regard to um, the DBE or our partnership with, uh, with basic education, in the 2019, 2020 and 2020, 2021 financial year, um, we were continuing with the engagement on the basis of us providing um, the school, uh, the, the pollution blocks, and also um, in terms of using the biomass that, that came out from the clearing activities. However, um, from our own perspective, in terms of re refocusing and um, prioritizing work that is aligned to our mandate, we have um, engaged with the Department of Basic Education to at least withdraw in terms of the uh, pollution uh, blocks um, uh, project. The intention now is to um, just deploy what the stock that is with us, but it's not an area that going forward, we are going to venture into, as I indicated earlier, that we are refocusing this project or this program in line with the mandate of the department. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Acting DDG Forestry, Kumeza. Uh, thank you, uh, DM. In terms of the recommissioning for the Western Cape, um, initially uh, in the Western Cape, um, the agreement was, the approval by cabinet was that about 45,000 hectares would be exited in forestry to try and, and deal with um, the conservation and environmental issues. When that happened, there were a number of um, uh, businesses like sawmills who had to close down because there would not be any fiber that they were going to be able to use for them to sustain uh, jobs in the area. And then later on, um, a study was done where um, half of the 45,000 was then going to be uh, taken back into forestry, which is the area now that we are trying to recommission, which is about um, 22,000 hectares. And then about half of, uh, of the other area, which is about almost 23,000 went back to conservation. So uh, in terms of looking at the indigenous areas and making sure that uh, the, the areas that have indigenous plants remain as pristine or as protected as much as possible, that 23,000 would then be protected. Then um, in terms of trying to make sure that we, we, we get the, the replanting happening in the Western Cape, um, we were disturbed by the fires that happened in 2017, 2018, um, where we are now um, have gone back to the area to try and make sure that there is a fire breaks that are there to try and ensure that uh, all the areas are protected, both the forestry areas and also the, the conservation areas. We already have a, a companies that are, um, are struggling with access to timber. Hence, we, we have now included uh, this, this target in the, in the master plan to ensure that uh, we give it the attention that it requires without necessarily uh, compromising the, con the conservation initiatives. We have done a cost benefit analysis uh, through a study that we did with the IDC, uh, where it looked at uh, the cost um, of replanting versus leaving the areas as they are and the extent of uh, the, the, um, the, the aliens that would then uh, be spread if there is no proper management of, of those areas. Hence, we, we want to make sure that uh, the recommissioning uh, does take place. Uh, I think the, um, the, the the only question was based on those um, or on the recommissioning of, of the Western Cape. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, DDG. Uh, Isham, uh, DDG Liga, there was a question with regard to forensic reports and the investigations.
Thank you, um, Deputy Minister. Um, the, uh, I'll start with the questions um, uh, in the order that they were asked. Uh, Honorable Arnolds, as well as Nguenya and Labuskakhni, um, raised the issue around the increased legal costs um, and the fact that we needed to report back on um, the nature of the cases. Um, so um, if it's okay, Chair, then we will report back in writing um, because there, there are quite a number of cases um, in, in, in terms of the nature of those cases, um, as well as the legal costs associated with those cases, and, and we'll do a formal response um, to the committee in that regard. Um, then the, the issue of um, the non-compliance is raised by Honorable Labus Kachni as well. Um, just to indicate to Honorable Labus Kachni that we, we're dealing with two separate issues. If we're looking at compliance, um, there's both administrative and legal processes that we deal with um, in, in terms of the compliance. So um, usually we start off with a pre-compliance notice and then compliance notices. And you, if we get uh, compliance, then we don't proceed to the actual um, taking them to court. And in most instances, we do get that uh, pre-compliance. So as far as the air quality goes, um, Honorable Labus Kachni, there has been substantial work um, particularly in, in, in the priority areas. Um, and in some instances, we've had, for example, um, industries that have spent close on 200 million rand just updating their, their um, uh, infrastructure to ensure that the emissions were reduced. Um, so, so if there is a requirement for that, we could indicate what um, compliance was done in particular instances. Um, then um, in relation to... Um, it was Honorable Nana's question um, in relation to Swarkops and the, the pollution there, just to indicate that we did receive a complaint from the Swarkops Conservancy um, with uh, DWS, who are the responsible department for water issues. We did engage with them around about September last year, and we're in the process of formally referring the, the, the Swarkops complaint. Um, to the DWS, but just to indicate that um, they've also received the complaint and they have attended to it. I think it was around about the 8th of June. Um, they attended um, on site and actually took samples um, in relation to, to the site. Um, so so that, that is something that is in progress, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Member Nana. Um, the, um, the, the, the matter will be investigated by DWS and pursued, but um, just to indicate that it's not only industry that, are, that seem to be polluting there, but there are a number of informal settlements that are also contributing to the, the overall um, um, pollution there. Um, so, so it's issues from industry as well as the, the human settlement, illegal human settlements um, around that area. Um, um, I think from that perspective, it's the we, we've dealt with the, the legal issues. Um, DM also indicated um, the issue around the um, irregular expenditure and, and, and what's happened. Just to indicate, Honorable Chair, that um, this uh, the, the, the reporting and the findings happened towards the end of the financial year. So as far as implementation of the, the, the recommendations of the AG went, that would have happened in the following financial year. So for example, the CFO raised the issue of the, the audit plan and, and, and um, uh, the implementation of that plan. So that would happen in the next financial year. So in terms of that, there was, and, and I can't remember um, which member, I think it was um, honorable, um, uh, I'm just trying to find um, the, which member it was, but in any event, um, raise the issue of, of, of what we've done in terms of, of um, consequence management. So there has been a, uh, subsequent to the AG report, there has been a forensic investigation and based on the recommendations from the AG as well as that investigation, we have um, proceeded with, with consequence management. Um, honorable members will um, probably note that uh, during the course of, of last year, um, there were um, uh, media reports about suspensions in the department and 
um, uh, suspension of officials in the department. And, and that's part of the um, consequence management that follows on the recommendations. Um, so I think I've dealt with all the issues in related, uh, related to uh, regulatory compliance and sector monitoring um, chair. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Isham. Um, Chair, I'm not sure whether there was, um, I, 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 I don't see it on my uh, uh, writing page. Uh, was there any questions from BNC? Uh, BNC DDG, did you note anything for you? Yes, Deputy Minister, the, there was a question on um, the contractual issues uh, associated with the uh, land that was supposed to be cultivated. Um, we indicated um, that the same financial support to this program was part of the EP's uh, uh, program or environmental programs, um, which the same reasons uh, associated with contractual issues uh, that Didi Jim Kiza spoke to um, apply or applied in this case. And therefore the, 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 the reorientation of the, the program itself from the EP perspective um, would also be applicable as it applies to the other programs that the uh, Didi Jim Kiza indicated earlier on. Honorable Nguenya, did raise an issue on aspects associated with some of the statistics related to rhino poaching. I thought maybe DDG Sham would talk to that, but um, a short response to that would be that minister does um, uh, um, publish uh, statements that provide updates on where things are. The last statement, if I'm not mistaken, it's, it was on the 1st of February, 2021. In that case, uh, comparison of 1920 and 2020 indicated a 33% decline in that report. But the full report is available also in the in the in the DIA website. Um, so are other reports prior to that um, that also cover what's happening in different provinces and all the issues associated with arrests and other matters in that space. Thank you very much, Deputy Minister. Thank you, uh, DDG. Um, Ocean and Coast, was there any questions for you? Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Deputy Minister. Good afternoon, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members and DG. Uh, my colleague from Fisheries dealt with enabling legislation. One of the questions asked by Honorable Labuskakhni, uh, just to say on the uh, socioeconomic uh, analysis that the Honorable uh, Labuskakhni raised, we do total ocean sector uh, uh, economic analysis to look at all the sectors or subsectors in the ocean's economy space that are contributing to GDP and jobs. And for reporting, what we do in the department is to also focus on the aquaculture jobs. Uh, my colleague also dealt with the uh, with the species, uh, the indigenous species, yellowtail and uh, and uh, cobia. What I can just add is to say that we encourage, of course, the cultivation of indigenous species. Of course, there are criteria that we look at, especially when it comes to risk and doing the risk uh, assessment. Just to give the honorable member a sense uh, for yellowtail from our economic modeling, uh, in the next five years, the projections is that we'll have 200 tons and that can go up to 3000 tons in the next five years. Uh, Honorable Nana raised the issue around uh, the involvement of provinces. Uh, I just want to, uh, uh, Honorable Nana, that we are working with the, in the oceans economy space very closely with all nine provinces. They are also part of the collective uh, through the offices of the Premier and MECs for Economic Development. They are part of the process uh, where uh, we engage with them on what are the initiatives in the respective provinces. For Eastern Cape in particular, as you may recall or are aware, that we've been very heavily involved and funded the Oceans Economy Strategy for the Eastern Cape. 
uh, there are quite a number of projects in uh, uh, aquaculture, for example, in Haga, in Hamburg, in Port Elizabeth, uh, some in Graf Reinet, in Kucha, in Port Elizabeth, and so on, uh, uh, that we are working on. There's also the initiative around small harbors, as you know, the intended small harbor as a priority harbor in Port St. John's. Uh, we need to do the feasibility, the economic and feasibility study uh, that would then give a sense to justify that kind of infrastructure spend. So we are working very much uh, with the provinces, especially when it comes to community-based projects. Uh, however, I must admit, there's still more work that the, the department will need to be, to, to be doing in this field. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I think um, that was the last uh, DDG from our side. As I have indicated to you that uh, if there are some of the questions that uh, we could not respond to, then we'll be guided by yourself. But I think this was the last DDG that had a question to, to respond to. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I'm not sure because I, I, I just went to the ladies, uh, I'm not sure whether did someone respond on the issue that was raised by Umamu Bibi uh, about the high panel um, uh, that was appointed by the minister. I'm not sure whether there was a response to that. <clears throat> Deputy Minister, may I come on that no. one? There was no response. If not, uh, who said yeah. what? They can quickly respond uh, because time is not on our side. Just. Okay, BNC, quickly. Oh, yes. Um, I can confirm that the high-level panel concluded its, its work um, in December and uh, provided and had to take the minister through the report in January. Um, the minister is still interrogating the report and uh, will soon be advised as to when um, the next steps would be including making that uh, uh, public. So that's how far I can go at the moment. Thank you very much, DM, uh, Honorable Chair, and Honorable Members. Over to you, Chair. We are done from our side. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, DM. Um, there was one member who, who wanted to do a follow up question. Uh, it was uh, Honorable Clute. I will just say. Uh, uh, seek indulgence with him that he can put uh, that question in writing so that when when the department respond to the other question they said they will give us in writing they they do so and uh, i'm hoping the dg was looking at the chat uh, so that uh, there were other remarks and inputs from members uh, from the chat group and also the closing remarks by by, 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 by the chair uh, of the committee. So those uh, issues and issues raised by Honorable Avstafni there on the chat group, I think they should be considered and be part of the uh, report that is sent to us as, uh, as a committee. Uh, thank you very much, uh, DM, and uh, thanks to your uh, newly appointed uh, DG and uh, we wish her well. Uh, I'm sure she has seen and uh, looked at the area of concerns from the select committee. Uh, together with your management team, you will be able to, to look at areas that uh, requires improvement, more especially audit, implementation of audit plan, uh, as well as uh, uh, performance uh, areas uh, in that regard. And, other concerns that uh, members have raised. Thank you very much. We we can release you, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll request that members put all those uh, uh, issues uh, before you go. DG, you must just look at your chat, our chat group, and make sure that all uh, matters of concern raised by members, you have captured them. Thank you very much, uh, DM, uh, together with your team. Thank you, you very much. Up. Thanks a lot, Chair. Thanks, thanks very much. Yeah. Oscar? 
Pascal? Yes, Chair. Uh, yes, Honorable Lauskartner. Uh, before we, we continue with the administration, um, I put it on the chat group, but I actually want us as a committee to take notice of that uh, for future planning. Could we please keep um, the, this situation and the Isimaling wetlands situation in the opening of the lagoon on the agenda so that um, the department can give us a feedback on the undertaking that, min that the minister said um, she would like to investigate. And, and there are a few uh, issues that she raised. And uh, I would like the department to come back to us at, at another stage and give us feedback on that, on the findings of that um, investigation and consultation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I hope the DG has uh, captured that because we said she must first look at uh, issues raised there on the on the on the chat group. And uh, one other thing, uh, Aska, that I have uh, realized. When we are dealing with the annual uh, report, it will be important that we categorize them. Uh, we can deal with one in the morning or any other day. Look at performance and also look at the issue of audit. We separate them uh, so, so that we have time because I can see we, we are trying to manage time now and the members are still having follow-up questions. And, and everything is something you can look at uh, in your management. Uh, um, uh, Aska, Aska? Yes, Chair, I've noted that. Support. If there's an honorable picture, just quickly, I'll be brief. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I am concerned about the fact that the department indicated that they requested the po uh, provinces to develop uh, uh, plans for the implementation of the uh, Paris Agreement. Um, in my mind, in my view, they're actually preempting something such as the uh, the uh, climate change poll. Uh, they're actually asking the provinces to develop policy documents that we have not seen. So I would request, and I think the the one official said they are available. I would request one, the briefing document to to the provinces. So in other, word, in other words, what the department requested them and all the provinces as input, I would like them have, to have them distributed among the members, please. Okay. Can, can you put that in writing, uh, Honorable Plute, so that it comes back uh, together with the other issues that we, we raised? It, it will be very helpful uh, for us to get it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Asga? Yes, Chair. You, we can move to minutes. The, yes, sure. the we we put before the committee the minutes of the previous meeting. Um, Chairperson. Um, yes, Honourable Annals. Oh, sorry. Are you are you on corrections of the minutes, or are you still busy? Well, we are on corrections. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, no, no, we are on corrections. Okay, can I, can I just check with the Secretariat now, the, the date of the meeting? Um, is, it, is it the 1st of December? It's not the 1st of December 2020. No, I've, I've, I've seen that I've rectified it already. Oh, it is rectified. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I've also seen it. Uh, yeah. oh, yeah, I've, <laughs> I've, I've seen it, I've rectified it a long time ago already. It was also on a Tuesday, the 1st of December. Uh, okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> It was, it's, it's, it's been rectified. Okay, no, no, you must rectify that. Uh, members, uh, I'm putting before the uh, committee the, the minutes. I'm happy that uh, members are reading the, 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 the minutes uh, uh, and uh, they are able to do corrections. Can I get uh, uh, any, uh, Proposal for adoption of the minutes and settlement. Chairperson, Chairperson, before we continue, the department is requesting that they be released. We have not released them yet. Could I have already released, released, the released them. I said, oh, okay. PG must remain to look at the chart. 
I've already released them. Yeah. Okay. You are Thank released. You, yes. Yeah. You are released. I needed the DG just to to get uh, the issues raised by members uh, in the chat, in the chat group. And I'm sure uh, Aska, you will be also be able to to check uh, issues that were not responded to and uh, forward them to the department for the department we'll to bring them in writing together with other items. Yeah. We'll do check. Can we, can we get a, a mover for the minutes? I move, Chairperson. Uh, Honorable Arnold's move. Any secondment? I second, Chairperson. Honorable Bibu seconds. Um, do we have any other issue or announcement? Before uh, before that, uh, we wish uh, Honorable Mudise to recover quickly. Um, no, Chair, we all covered. Yes, and you you must rest, uh, Honorable Mudise and Honorable Bibi. Yeah, they if must you rest. Feel like, if you feel like resting, rest. Uh, the other things we'll be dealing with them uh, in the committee. Otherwise, uh, we don't want... Uh, uh, to have uh, serious problems uh, on that side. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye. TVs. Thank you.